Who's the best of all time? John Jones, Ken Shamrock, Tito Ortiz, Anderson Silva. Ooh, tell me. Tell me down in the comments and in the description. Well, whatever you wrote down there, it's wrong. Because that title would go to George St. Pierre. And with that being said, it's obviously very hard to put a finger on just one. Because the UFC has had 2,744 fighters, I guess, according to UFC.com. And honestly, they're probably missing some fighters, so it's more around like 3,000. And how many of those have actually been champion? And I'm not talking about interim champions who are going to leave I'm talking about actual champions people that earned the undisputed belt as of 2023 the actual number was 114 and if you count for double champions it's actually more like 97 meaning that if you're a two-time champion that only counts for one so your chances of joining the UFC and becoming a champion is 3.6 percent very very low however even that is being generous 46 of those didn't even manage to get one title defense and even more of those 114 didn't even get more than one title defense. In fact, famously, the UFC heavyweight division had never had somebody defend their title more than three times. And the reason why I bring this up is because George St. Pierre is an extremely rarefied heir when it comes title defenses. And look, the most important thing, he was never controversial. He was an absolute draw and one of the most loved UFC fighters out there. Because in reality, I feel like to be the GOAT, there has to be so much more than just what happens in the octagon. And if you disagree, tell me in the comments and hear me out. GSP was born in St. Isidore, Quebec, Canada, a very small town. He was born two weeks late and he attributes this as the cause for his weird habits as a kid. Things like chewing on his collar and just having scabs on his skin and licking himself. At age eight, he had a kidney on his back that still had, and he still has it to this day after all those title defenses as well as dealing with psoriasis the whole way growing up that's one of the reasons why i start martial art because of a self-defense and i got i was bullied when i was young and at the time i saw it as a very negative experience and it was but i realize now that the fact that i was bullied when i was young helped me later on in my life facing the mental warfare that I had to face in mixed martial arts because it's a very egotistic sport. I remember when I was a kid, I was looking at myself in the mirror and I didn't like myself. I didn't like what I, what I saw in myself because I wanted to change my environment. And martial art taught me that if you want to change your environment, you want to change yourself you need to love yourself first originally it was just him and his dad training after he felt george was ready he actually enrolled them into an actual karate dojo he moved from white belt to black belt at age 13 proving that he was doing what he loved and was really good at it and he decided to put an end on it and defend himself with the skills that he did know and, bri and broke a bully's arm and finally that day the bullying stopped for him and in fact that on itself made him a popular kid which i mean to be honest it's pretty badass to say when you're a kid however he thought it was bs that people just respected him more because he broke a kid's arm and that he never needed to go that way so despite being more popular, he actually felt more distant than usual. And by the way, a lot of the information for this story was written on his own book, which I'm gonna put down below in the description if you wanna give it a read. GSP would finally step into the octagon for the first time. GSP would really get into MMA and start attending events. And he would just one day luckily see his idol walking down the road, Christophe the French Hurricane. Do. Even though he didn't have the best record, he did manage to put on some memorable fights. And that was enough for GSP to notice. He literally stopped traffic and started asking Kristoff to let him train in his dojo. And the craziest part is Kristoff actually was like, all right, sure, let's do it. GSP would move to Montreal and actually Kristoff would think that GSP is a world champion in the making. GSP would get a couple of victories under his belt and then fight Ivan Minjavar at 21 years old. And Kristoff was right there in his corner. The fight was short, but you can see how good GSP was. And it ended very controversially as GSP pointed that Minjavar had tapped out, verbally tapped out, and the referee actually believed him and stopped the fight. It was an honest mistake and GSP doesn't even count this as a win himself. So he kind of got away with this one. But at the end of the day, it didn't matter because his next three fights would be anything but controversial and he would show that he could dominate in that ring. And this is when George would face his first big test. At the time the UFC was doing terribly financially and they needed to bring in and they were bought by Sufa. 
and they were losing about $45 million until the ultimate fighter finally was able to break him even. But in 2003, they were doing pretty bad. They had really no fighters on their contract full time. So Pete Pratt had just beat future welterweight champion Robbie Lawler and moved to have a fight in Canada. Now, I don't know this for a fact, but possibly as part of a world tour, which used to happen a lot, where you would fight in the US and you'd be like, I don't take a fight in Canada, I'll take one in Japan. I'm just become a world renowned fighter. First fight in the tour was GSP in Canada. For Pete, it was an easy W, a no name opponent that he could easily beat. But once you got to the ring, you realize GSP was not playing around. GSP was already very impressive in Canada, but now had one, I'll be somebody with such a high profile, would lead him to get signed by the UFC two months later. It's important to mention the question that why did Pride not sign him if he was that good? Well, Pride didn't have a 170 division at the time. And the fact that he was in Canada flying him halfway across the world when he was relatively unknown to the Japanese crowd was too much of a gamble. But the UFC, right there in the US, it was just a perfect match. He would get thrown in the octagon with one of the most dangerous fighters of all time, Albert Asian. This time, at this point, a 12 fight veteran and a repeat title channel in their 150 and 170. He would actually become a champion at 155 later on too. So it would be, it would be no shame to lose to a name like that. So GSP wasn't necessarily being given an easy fight to start in the UFC career. And honestly, that's kind of how the fight played out. Just P even recounts himself as maybe he should have even lost that fight. Somehow he, found his, he found his way to squirm away from a bunch of submissions and put himself on top. It was a testament to GSP's talent and it got him noticed by everybody at this point. He had real title fight potential with only six fights under his belt. He would knock out Jay Durham in the first round in UFC 48. Sufa just decided, let's cash in this gold mine while we have it. He only had two fights in the UFC and seven fights total, and he would be put in the title picture in one of the earliest fights in the modern era against Matt Hughes in UFC 50 in October of 2004. And Matt Hughes would prove to be too much for DSP though. Hughes was one of the most dangerous people in the world as well, so there's no shame in losing to him as well, the champion at the time. But DSP would not be done there. Even though he did hand him his first loss, DSP would realize his mistakes that he made in that fight and would get better. This loss is the best thing happened in my career. I gained so much so much belief in myself you know so much confidence and now i'm twice stronger than i was uh, when i fought him and I'm, I'm twice uh, more confident than i was you know and i got a lot a lot more tools you know i will be the next uh, welterweight champion no doubt matt hughes was literally the undisputed champion nobody could touch him Fedor Emelianenko was in his infancy as champion and Anderson Silva wouldn't even become a UFC middleweight champion until 2006. So this was a bitter loss for young GSP. Immediately after this, GSP would tear through the entire division, facing the who's who of the division. BJ Penn had earned his nickname as the Prodigy, where he went all out in the weight class. Between Dwayne Ludwig, Enzo Gracie, Rodrigo Gracie, and even 220 pound Lyoto Machida. He had gained the nickname of the Prodigy due to his unbelievably fast rise in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, being the first American world champion of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So, a one on one fight against BJ Penn was pretty simple. Anything you do, just don't take down BJ Penn. But GSP's coach would actually advise him of the opposite. His belief was BJ Penn had no bottom game submission, he would only be able to be good if he was on top. And even though GSP didn't fully believe it, it was part of the training camp. Fast forward to the fight and his eye was battered and beaten up. This is probably the first time you saw a dejected GSP not knowing what to do. That's when Danaher, his coach, once again brought it up. Take BJ Penn down. And sure enough, that's exactly how GSP won his fight, taking down BJ Penn. So here he was again, one on one against Matt Hughes, the only man that had been able to, de beat, to defeat him to date. GSP would get injured, BJ Penn would go and face Matt Hughes, Matt Hughes would crush BJ Penn, and Dana White would literally say that Matt Hughes was the best fighter of all time. So this fight got even bigger when BJ Penn was healthy. But finally, it was time for GSP to shine. Very therapeutic things I, that I like to do is drive my car around and see normal people. I drive and I see an old lady with her grocery store bag. No straight long punches by George. And I'm thinking like, she doesn't care if I win the fight Saturday <laughs> or not. She's not even gonna hear about it. High kick and versatile with a striking. And I look, right, oh, right. he's another guy yelling to another guy. Good leg kick, a smile on Hughes' face. Oh, this guy is going to the bank to pay his mortgage. 
That one did some damage. They don't care. They don't care, you know. What a job done by George St. Pierre. The effect that I have on the universe is so freaking small. Oh, oh, kick. Kick. Oh, he's Nobody cares. I'm the only one putting the pressure on me. With the elbows, and it's over. George St. Pierre is the new welterweight champion. Nobody yeah. gives a damn about it. So that's why they helped me to perform now. I have a very hard way out here. And wow, it's, it's just amazing. I, you know, I'm so surprised. I'm so happy. I, I can't even, like, cry. You know, it's, I, can't, I can't describe how am I feeling right now. With this win, he would legitimately achieve his biggest dream of having a belt in martial arts. And GSP would go on a streak. Well, not actually. So he would face Matt Serra at first, and Matt Serra would beat him on what's known as the biggest underdog victory in MMA. The moment is it. He says that his issue was that he didn't admit the knockdown. He didn't take the knockdown and never admitted that he was actually hurt. This is a lesson that would prove a lot in his career going forward. So GSP was GSP once again back in the title hunt. GSP would once again dominate a ground game technician with his previous unknown credentials in submissions in the ground at all. But with a win like this over the top prospect, GSP was now on the title picture once again against Matt Serra. And Matt Serra was supposed to face Matt Hughes, but Serra would get injured, and this would fast track another fight between GSP and Serra for an interim title. And he would beat Matt Hughes finally. He would once again defeat Matt Hughes with an arm bar fairly easily, and he would cement himself as the winner and the best man in the rivalry. At this time, the UFC had never been into Canada. The UFC was very early, and it was very early in their career, in, in the startup. And now Matt Serra was healthy, and the stage was set. Once again, GSP against Matt Serra. And this time, taking place at the Bell Center, located in Montreal. This set the UFC all-time attendance record with 21,390,000 fans. And with an immense amount of pressure over his head, fighting in his own country, almost in his hometown, he had to win, and he did easily. This time, the dream was actually truly realized. He would go on to his streak, dominated John Fitch, who would go on to be undefeated except because of GSP for seven years, completely beat BJ Penn. Tiago Alves was a machine. Dan Hardy and John Koshner would once again break the record in North America in attendance, this time packing 55,000 in the Rogers Center, beating Jake Schultz. And after he bought Strike Force, Nate Diaz would come out and fight GSP. Being one of the most popular MMA stars, facing him against GSP was a massive fight. GSP would tear his ACL, and the fight would get scrapped off. The UFC didn't love Nate either, so he wouldn't get a title shot per se. UFC said in his book, I was unhappy and mirrored in a negative cycle of useless repetition. Back then, ACL tears were just the death of a career. He thought his career was over, and rightfully so. Nick Diaz would beat BJ Penn once again and would call out GSP. Nick Diaz would face Carlos Condit and GSP was still nowhere to be seen because he had a bad knee still. Carlos Condit would win the interim title, but the actual champion was still healing up. And on November 17th of 2012, GSP would control Carlos Condit and become the legitimate champion. But it wasn't that simple. He had a flashback to his Matt Serra fight when Carlos Condit kicked him in the head. And GSP says in his book that he learned from the Matt Serra kick and knew what to do. And this was able to get them the decision victory. GSP would beat UFC 100, and his next fight would easily be his toughest defense ever. UFC 167, GSP started the talk of needing more stringent testing on his actual division or on a different division. Rumblings of maybe GSP retiring started going around behind the scenes. And GSP denied it. He would win this fight by decision. However, <clears throat> very controversial as no other media outlet really gave the fight to GSP. Many fighters called the fight a robbery and Dana White would not hide his feelings about it. Does anybody here think Johnny Hendricks didn't want to fight? It's about damage. This is a fight. I'm blown away that George St. Pierre won that fight. And listen, I'm a promoter. I think the Nevada State Athletic Commission is atrocious. I think the governor needs to step in immediately before these guys destroy the sport like they did boxing. On top of this, there was a ton of tension between Dana White and GSP. 
at the time and in the press conference. Dana would say that GSP was at the hospital. George went straight to the hospital and Johnny's doing an interview. He'll be here in two minutes. Okay. Only to be contradicted moments later. It's up to the judges, uh, but I, I, I give my best. He and I will leave here and we will go talk. At this point, he wouldn't call that a retirement, but he called it a hiatus. And this would be the last thing we'd see of the welterweight pink, king ping at the time. Over two years later, because he never retired, there was always constant talk of him coming back. In fact, infamously, Dana White removed his title off his locker and people just assumed that was a retirement, but he never said so. In 2016, GSP announced that he was ready to come back to the UFC. You think it would be as simple as this. He wants to come back, the UFC wants to make money, let's do it. Exactly, that's what I'm wow. saying, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. There's a shot, there's another uh, goal, another run. I better do it and do it quick because it's time to do it now. George St. Pierre will not fight again. I've been in this since I was 19 years old. I know the mentality of a fighter that wants to fight and I know the mentality of a fighter that does not want to fight. I, I wholeheartedly believe you will never see George St. Pierre in the octagon again unless he's cornering somebody. I'm telling you again, I don't think GSP wants to fight. I, I just think he lost that fire a long time ago. Whether this was a way to get GSP to lower his money, weird dislike was there. And this was a thing that lasted a whole year. GSP would announce himself as a free agent and join a fighter's union that would die shortly after. In 2017, his next fight would be announced. George St. Pierre is back. So everything I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the biggest fight as possible. And I wanna make One gives you fuck. No one gives a fuck, George. Everybody, I'm sorry I'm late. Dana, my apologies, George, my apologies. There was no time set for the fight, really, but people would expect it to be UFC 213, but GSP just kept saying that he wouldn't be ready for that time. This prompted Dana White to just call the fight off and just put Joel Romero against Robert Whitaker. But after two and a half years and a massive speculation, finally GSP was booked to fight Michael Bisping for the middle title at UFC 217 in New York City, MSG. The promotion picked up right where it stopped. But videos started swirling around in social media, something that GSP was not used to back in the day, of GSP looking out of shape. He was facing certif colitis, and I wish I could pronounce it better, but this would affect him enough that he would have to cancel the fight once again. People were afraid that the fight was gonna get canceled and they were calling him out of shape. However, GSP was able to fight all this. He would make weight and he would step in the ring at MSG and kill it. It felt like a real main event, like a real moment. And GSP was fully back. He would beat Michael Bispin, even better than anybody could have ever predicted. Right after, GSP would decide to relinquish his belt, but he was back now, right? So he's still gonna have another fight even if it's not for the title. Well. Turns out the issues were uh, not quite cleared up yet. GSP just wanted to fight two people, either Conor McGregor or Habib Nurmagomedov. However, when Conor got defeated definitively by Khabib, that's when GSP decided he only won Khabib. And negotiations did happen, but never happened because Dana White blocked this fight. So on February 1st, 2019, GSP would take a press conference in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. There's no tears. I'm very happy to do it. And I always said that I, I want to retire on my own and not be told to retire. So uh, in combat sport, in full contact sport, that's how you should retire. You should retire on top. And announce his retirement for good. GSP is one of the guys that went out with his streak intact. He didn't ride the wave all the way out until he was done. This is something that some athletes probably should consider over in the life. But if you want to see two fighters that didn't, well, I made one about Conor McGregor right there. I made one about John Jones right there. Feel free to check either of those out, and I will see you in those videos. See ya! Bottle for me with the yours now. You've been drinking, but take it slow. Ballin' for you, fallin'.